welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we are back with another double blind head to head where we have drawn these two samples at random from our blind sample pool, or should I say this pair at random from our blind sample pool, mm. because everything in that pool is paired up against each other for one reason or another. Yeah. Maybe it's available versus allocated. Maybe it's expensive versus inexpensive. Maybe it's just two good value buys or two equally priced items. And we want to see which one might be the better product for you to spend your money on, but we taste them totally double blind. We let you know what we think about them and then we'll give them a rating and find out the price and mm -hmm. see if that changes how we feel before we find out what we're drinking. Yeah. We do it this way so that you get the most honest opinions possible. This takes all the hype and bias and any of that stuff yep. out. Like if they're inexpensive, we don't know that. They could come across awesome. If they're very expensive, we, we don't, don't know, know that either. But what I do know is I'm ready to get glass one on the nose. Let's do it. Let's go. Are you getting much on this? So I'm not getting a lot on it. I'm not either. It's pretty faint coming out of the glass and the color's quite light as well, although it is coating glass nicely. Mm -hmm. But what I am getting out of this is like a little bit of a butterscotchy note, oh, which is kind of nice. I'm getting some caramel and I'm getting a little bit of funk. And I think it might be a kind of an oaky funk but it could be maybe a youthy funk or maybe a rye funk, but it smells more bourbon-y to me. I, when I smelled this, the image that popped in my head was a number two pencil. Yeah, like oh the, yeah. The whole pencil, the, like the wood part, the little metal ring and the eraser, the yeah. whole pencil. And then that pencil kind of rolled around in dirt a little bit. Yeah, I can get but all But like, that. it's ever so slightly. It's like way over there and I'm smelling it from here. Yeah, I can get all that. Let's get it on the palette. This is interesting. It's got like a florally, florally flowerness to it. Yeah. Remember when I said I thought it might be a rye? You think it's a rye? I think it's a rye. Yeah. A sec, as I continued to nose it, I got a little bit more. That sip, I'm getting that prickly kind of rye spice mm -hmm. on the back of the palate. It's kind of sweet though. It is sweet, but I'm also getting a little bit of that spearmintiness. Oh, It's almost like a like a double mint gum type of note. Like, you know, that sugary spearmint mm -hmm. thing? It's not like a spearmint... Um, you know, peppermint spearmint thing. Yeah. It's more like sugary gum type of spearmint. Interesting. Man, that is really interesting. I don't know if I like that or not. You're going in for a second, so mm -hmm. I will too. I think I like it. I don't dislike it. So if I don't dislike it, does that mean I like it? I mean, you could just be so-so on it. That's our just okay rating. Yeah. Yeah, I think to me, that second sip, I'm getting a little bit more chocolate a little bit of butterscotchiness, caramel, See? that type of vibe, but it's more just like chocolate and mint. I'm not getting any of that. I'm getting flowers. Yeah, it has like a, it has a florality mm -hmm. to it. That's certainly in the glass. And maybe that it's more on the nose than the palate for me, mm. but it's certainly in the glass. Let's see how glass two compares on okay. the nose. Whoa, this definitely smells more butterscotchy to me. Um, this, why are these together? These smell not even close to each other. This smells like savory and meaty to me. It smells like butterscotch and bacon. Yeah, I'm not getting butterscotch on this at all. I am. Butterscotch and bacon. Wow. Yeah, and when I smell it, it like reminded me of like a like a soy sauce glazed pork dish or something. Mm, I could see that. So soy. It, it has that savoriness to mm -hmm. it. Interesting. I kind of want to taste this. Yeah, as I, I mean, this is the sort of thing that... You know, I'm going to clear, I'm going to smell my skin and kind of clear my nose out to see if that'll help me or not, which is if you've never tried that before, it definitely helps reset your nose or you can use coffee beans or something like that. Interesting. Okay. Now I'm getting a little bit more of the sweetness, but to me, the sweetness I'm getting is like, you know how I make those chocolate chip bacon bit cookies? Mm -hmm. That's what this is reminding me of mm -hmm. on the nose. Let's get it on pout. By the way, I didn't mean to gloss over that. Chocolate chip bacon bit cookies are amazing. Check the video description below. I found the recipe from Mojo Barbecue. This guy is awesome. He's super down to earth, wins competitions in the barbecue world, has okay. a YouTube channel. You'll put it in the description. It's down there. Okay. Make these cookies. Thank me later. So what did you get on I don't, this? I don't know. As soon as I was taking a sip, I was like, I mentioned chocolate chip bacon bit cookies and then didn't even tell the people what that was about. Well, you so gotta tell the people. It's down there. I need another sip. Okay. What'd you get? I'll take another sip. Okay, too. we'll get a second first sip. So it's not as bacony, butterscotchy. It's a little more oaky for me on this on the palate. Yeah. Like dry a little bit. Yeah, dry, dry oak mm -hmm. on glass two compared to glass one, mm -hmm. where the rye spice was a little bit more prevalent. 
and prickly on glass one. <laughs> on glass two, that's tamed down a little bit. It again seems to be a rye. Watch these not be. We've made that mistake plenty of times. We've made that mistake. <laughs> but but we're, you've made that mistake. I'm only mentioning it so you know the experience. I'm How getting. it comes across. Right. It might be a rye. I, I can I could be on board with number one being a rye. Right. I'm not trying to guess that they are rye. I'm just letting you know that they come across like rye right. because if they are bourbons and you're a bourbon drinker that hates rye, I would not get either one of these. If you're a rye lover who loves rye, maybe you need to look into these depending on what they are but we're gonna find that out as we spend a little bit more time with both mm -hmm. of these. I wish I got more off a of glass too, but it really is just like dry oak, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of like rye flavor, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have the spice to it like glass one has. I will say sitting here after drinking two sips, it's kind of warm in the back of my throat. Yeah. So it's, I feel like it would build proof wise the more you sip it. Yeah, I definitely think it has the better finish of the two, mm -hmm. but we're gonna need to spend some time with them, yep. not talking to a camera, clear our palettes, compare them, yeah. you know, give them each their due diligence, yep. and then we'll be back with our full thoughts here in just a minute. All right, this one got really interesting for me. Yeah. What did you think after spending some time? Um, well, I think glass two opened up, it got a little more molasses -y, not yep. but not super sweet. So yep. I really liked it. So I'm giving it a thumbs up. Okay. For me, glass one, I got sweet tea and dirt. And it was interesting. I didn't dislike it, but it would be a mood pour. Mm -hmm. It's not something I would reach for all the time. So compared to glass two, I'm giving it just okay. Okay, so you prefer glass two. Yeah. I think on paper, glass two is the quote unquote better pour. Mm. Like I think it's more well-rounded. It might have more age to it or something. But for me, glass one came across sweeter. It did, it was very sweet. Very sweet, dirt. Al almost bordering on like the same type of sweetness you get from like a light whiskey. Like a really, really prevalent corn sweetness. Interesting. But to me, the rye spice that was there made it kind of balance out with the sweetness a little bit. Okay. Neither one of these are my jam. I'm giving them just okay on both of them. That's fair. Because I could kind of take them or leave them. I don't dislike either one. I just think that glass two is probably on paper the better pour. And I think I lean a little bit more sweet and that is towards glass one, which were, where my preference is today. Oh, but shocked. But color me shocked. But I don't, neither one of these are fully in my wheelhouse. Right. So I gotta be yeah. in the right mood to go for either one either of these. Either one, that makes sense. So let's find out our price and then we're gonna find out what we've been drinking. So in our pool, glass number one is number 76. Okay, that is $55. Okay. If it's a rye, which it seems like it might be, then I'm going to guess that that's right on par with what I would expect to pay yeah. for a rye. Watch it not be a rye. What's the price on glass number two? $65. So 55 versus 65? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think that checks yeah. out on what the pours yeah. are. I'm staying where I'm at. I think my, my scores aren't changing. Thumbs up, just okay. Yep. I'm staying where I'm at okay. too. We're split here, so let's just find out what glass one is. Okay. Will it four year rye? Whoa, really? What's yes. glass number two? New Riff single barrel rye. <laughs> and these are both 106 proof. The Willis 106.8 and the New Riff is 106.5. So you know we were talking about that floralness or whatever? Uh -huh. In this bottle, and this bottle has been around forever. Oh. I bought this for your birthday in like 2020 and I don't like it at all. But today, really? today you did? No, to, I said I preferred it to this today. Ah. But I still said it wasn't my jam and I gave it a just okay. Yeah. It's not enough to pass on it, which in the past I would have said pass. Interesting. Man, this, this matchup has been in the pool since the channel began. Wow. So wow. is this the old bottle of New Riff that we used to have? Um, I'm yeah, assuming. we've been through several new riff single barrels. Yeah, because yeah. I remember really liking that one. So will it? That mm -hmm. one's that's like hard to find, right? Even if you can get it for the price. This four year small batch is becoming more findable. Okay. But you know, typically early in this bottle's life, it was to me like a bowl full of grass clippings that had vanilla extract drizzled over them. It's kind of mellowed out mm -hmm. a little bit since then. Yeah. Whereas the the new riff rye. It is definitely coming through with more oak and more balance and mm -hmm. everything. It just didn't quite have the sweetness that the Willet had today, and which I liked was what it won it over. Because it wasn't as sweet as number one, glass one. And glass one, it was just too florally for me for me today. 
Yeah. I mean, will it rye, floral, these things kind of go hand in hand. You were right for a that lot it was a rye. Yeah. I mean, they are a very specific type of profile. Yeah. If you like rye, you know, I think it's worth checking them out. The will it rise, I don't know what we said, 55? Uh -huh, I 50, think they're I, 55 and 65. Okay, I do think the Will It Rise are more like 65 in our market. However, mm. based on having tried several of these yeah. and having owned several of these, when the push comes to shove for buying purposes, I would buy the New Riff single barrel rye over the Will It for your small batch. Gotcha. Just because. I know this product and I know it's good. And Even I'm, if it's a single barrel, you, you're playing the single barrel of roulette, right. you still chance it. Right. Well, the small batch, they're different batches all the time, different right. proof points. And I know that most of these I don't like all that much. Whereas some of these single barrels, I actually do like quite a bit. Gotcha. So yeah, this is really interesting. Yeah. I think it's funny to show that I said, I thought this was the better pour. Mm -hmm. I just picked this because it was sweeter. Will it by all accounts is way more of a like, hyped brand mm. and this is way more of yeah. a showpiece on your shelf versus the new riff but we both thought the new riff was the better pour yeah i just gravitated towards the sweetness so i mean yeah. i've already said that but this is super interesting head to head hopefully you glean something from it if you've tried both of these or if you own both of these put them in a blind head to head together it'll only be single blind yeah but it is interesting it is if you've tried both of them side by side let us know in the comments below which you preferred fascinating head to head yeah. this is our blind sample pool at work i mean this thing has been in our pool for literal two years <laughs> and i completely forgot about it so wow yeah. just just goes to show you what blind tastings can do for you hope you enjoyed this if you like blind tastings make sure to subscribe to the channel because yep. that's what we do over here like the video if you liked it and hit that bell if you want to join us for a pour on one of our live streams we go live once a month yes and the bell will actually help you not miss it that's true that's it for today. Be good to each other. And until next time, cheers. cheers.